All right, the Bible says in the book of Psalms, this is the Lord's day. Amen. Let us be glad and rejoice. And uh, we have no reason not to rejoice this morning because the Lord has blessed us. Uh, He's gathered us together again. And uh, You know, as Brother Larry was speaking about Jerusalem, there's got to be something another there that's going to destroy the temple. Right. And uh, no doubt, when this this all gets settled, that all the the United the Muslims and all the people that are uh, against Jerusalem will come in and probably I, I feel like that'll be what will happen is there'll there'll be war there and they'll tear it down and it'll be it'll be built back and during that time I don't know if any Christians will be here to that hadn't been raptured, I don't know when it'll be, but I, I'm assuming that it'll be after the rapture, I don't know. But anyway, uh, it's so close, you can smell it. Amen. It is. And uh, I know people have said that for years and years and years and years and years. Uh, but listen, the, 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 final, the final thing is, is beginning to happen. And I, I, I wondered a lot of time why the Donald Trump was elected president. And I knew that God had the, the power to do it, and He did it. And this is for it. This is this is why uh, it's 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 part of the plan. So people mm-hmm. just hang on because it's 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 fixing to happen. Amen. We want to study this morning a little bit in the Book of Matthew, chapter twenty-three. If you would, you could be turning your Bibles to chapter twenty-three. <clears throat> we want to see some things here and read some things about some of the people that were there uh, during Jesus' time and, and how that they, uh, uh, what he thought about them. And uh, we have the same thing <clears throat> today in our, our life. We have a, uh, it's probably more of them uh, than it was in Jesus' time because there's more people on the earth. Right. And uh, so in chapter 23, verse 1, then the, says, then spake Jesus unto the multitude and his disciples. <clears throat> saying the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works, for they say and do not. Now, we want to look at this just a little bit this morning concerning the scribes and the Pharisees. And they were, the scribes were those that recorded. Those were the ones that were law teachers and and uh, uh, they uh, was strict with the law, and, and the Pharisees were much stricter. And uh, both of them evidently preached the law, but didn't do it. And that's the same way with uh, our uh, so-called churches today: is that they're they're reading God's word, and they have the revised versions, and they're they're saying we need to do this and we need to do that. But listen. What did Jesus say to them? He said, All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. He was concerning the law. The law was true. The law was what was given to Moses for a guide to the people. And he said, You observe that law. You keep that law. But notice what he says here. That observe and do. But do not ye after their works. And their works were deceitful works. And we'll see a little bit later on uh, using the word proselyte, what that they would do in order to uh, get someone in, uh, to follow them. But now he says here, uh, these things after their works, for they say and do not. And this is this to me this morning is one of the biggest damnable things uh, in our country today is that these false prophets. They're walking around in their robes and their halos over their head and they're uh, uh, saying, uh, you know, good things. But listen, you look behind them in their, in their past and you, you see where that they have been corrupt in all manner of ways, even from right. child abuse on up to mm-hmm. everything else. And that's what they stand for, people, is to hide behind that cloak and to te- tell people, oh, I'm ready to go, and uh, I'll pray for you, and you can uh, you can do this for me, and you can do that for me, and listen all the time. They're they're just 
uh, saints, Satan's saints. And they are doing this, and this is what Jesus was warning the apostles about, and the, and the followers that were there. He says, you observe the law because they are a teacher of the law. But the thing of it is, what they do, their works they do, do not observe them, do not pay no attention to them, do not practice what they do because, listen, they're deceitful, and that is our, that is our world trend today is deceiving and mm -hmm. being deceived. And that's what Jesus said, uh, said uh, uh, that, or the Bible says that, that in the latter days they would be deceived and being deceived, and that's what we're in right now is the latter days. Right. And so here he see, we see here in verse 4, For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. And what he's talking about here is these works and, uh, you know, in these poverty, and, and this is a good example of these poverty places like in Mexico and places like that. You have these churches set up out there, the beautiful thing that they can make, and they're squeezing every nickel out of these poor people that they right. can. And they're telling them, "Hey, uh, you 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 must give, you must give, you must give." And and listen, the people are starving to death, mm -hmm. and a lot of them will give the last penny they have and go hungry. And listen, they're they're following a a sect, a a a, a thing that is that is untrue. And uh, all these all of these churches, all they want to do is be a, a beautiful place where that they. Some of their people can live uh, and flourish and, and, and live off of these other poor people. And here's this is what he's saying here to them. He says, For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, mm -hmm. and, and, and lay on, the, on, on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. In other words, they're not going to do anything but suck everything they can out of the right. poor people and just keep just keep ta taking and taking and taking. So he says here, now notice in verse 5, but all their works they do for to be seen of men. They may draw their polarities and enlarge the borders of their garments. And we have we have studied this in times past, but <clears throat> in, the, in, the, in, the, in the days of Jesus and all this, he says, uh, they they done the works and Jesus is telling them to be seen of men. And they would go out and do these things and have these long prayers in the uh, synagogues and out in the streets. And they would they would do this and do that to get the packs of the uh, on the back of the men. And he says here uh, here that they their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their polarity, and that was the. Uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the bottom of their their robes or their um, clothing that they wore, and I think it, they would put prayer calls or prayer notes and all of this in there and make out like that they had all of these people that they were praying for, and they wasn't they didn't even look at one of them, mm -hmm. but they were they were doing that as a show, mm -hmm. and uh, and the people the people knew what it was supposed to be because that's what they had said it was for. But listen, they were being deceived and the people were doing all they could to promote them and to help them. And all the time they were fat catting on them and they were, and they're not doing it. And listen, it hadn't changed. Right. It's still the same today. And people are, people are just writing this religious thing uh, to the full and they're, they're telling people how good they are and how they pray for people and how they uh, perform miracles and all this. And, you know, even some of them claim that they've seen uh, uh, statues come to life and blood come out of their faces and tears come down their eyes. Listen, it's a hoax. It's mm -hmm. a, it's, it's a, it's a horrible thing. And here it says here uh, that they do this. And then notice in verse 6, And love the, the uppermost room at feast, and the chief seats in the synagogue. That's where they wanted to be up front, where that everybody in the back could see them, and they would stand up and and, and bow and tell, do all of these things. And that's what they loved. And the and the people would 
raise their hands and holler and praise them and all this thing. And that's what they loved. Mm -hmm. And that's that is the devil. That is the devil incarnated in them. Mm -hmm. And so we see these are some of the things that that was happening here. And Jesus was warning these people about this. So he said here in verse seven, uh, and and good and greetings in the marketplace markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi or uh, ordained teachers or uh, uh, preachers or whatever but this is this is what they were called and in verse 8 and but he Jesus says be not you called rabbi for one is your master even Christ and all ye are brethren and so this morning this rabbi rabbi referred to him as their as their master as their in the masonic uh, go around they call it uh, the uh, uh, masonic uh, i mean the uh, the uh, master of all all the lodge and all this and it's it's the same thing mm -hmm. as as they were doing here and still these people these people that are uh, pertaining to these uh, lodges and things like this they're still going to church uh, and you have you have these in the, in the churches that are preachers mm -hmm. and listen people they what they do and what they swear to and what they uh, say that they'll do listen it's wrong it's wrong and it's wrong and yet people looks at that oh he's a good man he's a good man listen that's that's what was going on here. Right. These people wearing these long robes and wearing all this stuff around the bottoms of them and all this. Listen, it's it's of the devil. Mm -hmm. And uh, you uh, might well spit in one of them's face to say anything about it, but I know what I'm talking about. Right. Amen. And so uh, here he says here to be called rabbi or to be called master, and he says, but be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master even Christ. And so what they were wanting to do was take the place of Christ right. in the people's life. And this is what he's saying here. Even Christ and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth for one is your father which is in heaven. So this morning when these people bow to this these individuals and father this and father that listen they're in sin they're wrong Amen. and uh, god's word says they are and they can take their translations they can take their revised versions or whatever they want to and skip this but listen god's word is true and this is what it says it's a king james version and listen it's what god's word says and so here he says Neither call, neither be ye called master in verse ten. Neither be ye called master, for one is your master, even Christ. And Amen. so, uh, you know, back in the old days, uh, I understand that the uh, the black slaves uh, had to address their owners as master, or they call them masters. And listen, that was wrong. That was wrong, and, and of course, they weren't referring to him as their savior i know i don't believe that because listen they learned a long time ago that uh, uh in, in those cotton fields all who jesus christ was mm -hmm. but listen that is an, a that that goes on still in the country as people referring to their their uh, owners or their uh ones that they work for as masters well they're not their master they're their they're their uh, uh Ones that hires them and does this, but they don't. They're not supposed to refer to them as masters, even uh, even in that. So he says here in verse eleven, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. So now you, you, this is where this is where that our uh, Catholic churches and all these these other churches listen. Uh, they say that uh, the Pope is, uh, is the one that can touch uh, water and turn it into blood, and it's Jesus' blood, and things of this nature. But listen, what does it say here about the one that's greatest among you? He is your servant. Mm -hmm. And that 
it's that would put them that would put them in the wrong place because they're sitting up on a pedestal and when they go by people want to bow and kiss their hands and, and touch their garments and stuff like that. And they're putting themselves in the same con, uh, position as Christ is. Mm -hmm. But here, but here, notice here in verse 11, but he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. And listen, who was the greatest among the children of Israel? Who was the greatest? And who is the greatest in your life? Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the greatest. And He came this morning not as a, a warrior or not as a, uh, a big uh, flusy dude. But listen, He came meek and humble as a servant. And now He has done that. Next time He comes, it will be a different tale. It will be a different story altogether because He is going to come as King of Kings and Lord of Lords and then there won't be that servant there. He'll be the king of kings. And so here, here is the, the difference. And in, in, in verse 12, And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And that, that exalting, listen, comes from the lips of the one that wants to be exalted. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they take this position of, I am, uh, I am Christ. Uh, Jesus warned them in the last days there would be many that come to them saying they were Christ. Well, it's 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 here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's here. Yeah, uh, they don't get up on television and and out in the public and, and do this. But listen, in their churches and all like this, the people recognize them as such mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they respect them as that. But uh, one day, one day. It will set. It will come out openly, and they will be they will be uh, 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 introducing themselves as Christ. Mm -hmm. And so uh, here it is. Uh, it's something we can uh, we can uh, think upon when we we'll see the day approaching. But he says uh, in verse twelve, "Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted." And we see this morning the, the, the life of Jesus Christ, how that He came into this world, that He was uh, abased, and had He humbled Himself, and that He, he come as a servant, even, even to the point of washing their feet. And this was a type of showing his, uh, Him as a servant, and He even washed the one that would uh, have... Would, would uh, uh, sell him out and he would be crucified. So he came as a servant, but listen, that was all because that God wanted it that way. Mm -hmm. And 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 this is this is the fulfillment of and whosoever shall he, sh shall exalt himself himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. And we see Jesus Christ exalted, high and lifted up, Amen. sitting on the right hand of the Father. Now. Here he says, he's talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees. And I was looking at this, and, and I noticed that this word wool is put in there eight times. And it's for, you know, the, the number eight is for new beginnings. So I, I feel like that what he is telling us here, if we could get, if we could get all of this straightened out, that there would be a, a, a new, well, it will be a new world. Uh, he'll, he'll come back and reign. But listen to us as we read. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. These are the lawmakers. These are the ones that taught the law. These were the educated people. Hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Hypocrite is one that will tell you that uh, he is this, uh, he is the Christ, he is a saved person, but he's lying to you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a hypocrite. He says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Notice, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourself, neither suffer ye them that are, are entering, entering to go in. Or, so he says this suffering, he says, is permit. And this, this is the way. So neither permit ye them that are entering to go in. And so what is he saying here? These scribes and Pharisees, the, the hypocrites of bounty is that they're lying to people 
They're telling them the wrong about salvation. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, hey, you've got to, you've got to work. You've got to, uh, you've got to be baptized. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. You've got to do this. And what he's saying is here: you are, you're, you're keeping them from uh, serving the Lord. You're keeping them from being saved because you're telling them that they got to do all these things, and they're falling for that, and they're never saved. Mm -hmm. Because if a person, if a person thinks that uh, if I do good works, if I if I tithe, if I'm baptized, if I uh, love my neighbor as myself, these things like that. Listen, without the salvation of God, listen, they're doomed. Amen. And this is what this is what the false prophets are doing to the people of the world today. They're telling them all of these things that they need to do, and they're leaving out salvation. Right. And so here he's he's saying, uh, "Woe to them!" Notice here in verse fourteen, "Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers." And that was one of their that was one of their great things that they loved to do: stand in the synagogues in the streets and all this and all that and I did this and I did this and just keep on and keep on going on with this and people would come around and give them money and, and say oh ain't he great and they believe everything that they said mm -hmm. and they were lying to them. Right. They're, they're hypocrites is what he says. So he says war do you scribe Pharisees before you devour widows houses in other words you just you just take take what you can get if it's devouring, you tear, uh, you're, you're getting it from her, and she's not got anything anyway. And she, if, if she's a widow, she ain't got no income, and all she's all she has is what people give her, and they're taking that. Mm -hmm. And so that that to me is 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 is, is, is terrible. But notice, and, and for a pretense, you make long prayers. Therefore, <coughs> ye shall receive the greater damnation. Mm -hmm. And so this is what this is what we uh, uh, that these people that are uh, the, in this condition and these scribes, these Pharisees, these lost uh, people. Listen, that's what that, that's what's going to happen. They are going to inherit the greater damnation Amen. In, in the lake of fire. And so here. Well, in verse 15, woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees. It's the same thing over and over. Jesus talked about, for you compass, here it is, sea and land to make one proselyte. Mm -hmm. Now, a proselyte is one <clears throat> that is trying to reach the truth, trying to, uh, or maybe has the truth, and these yo holes would come along and lie to him. And tell him, no, that's not right. Well, listen, that we've still got it today. Amen. People, you can you can have a little child or a, a, a person here that has has made a profession of being saved, and the, these these boogers will come along and tell them, no, you can't pay no attention to what that man says over there. You can't pay no attention to what that church does. And listen, the man is hearing the truth, and they're pulling him away. And mm -hmm. notice what it says here. He says. For you can pass sea and land to make one proselyte, and that's a, a, a man that had the truth and it, and it's, it's changed his mind or changed. And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. And so they cause that man to be in worse shape than they are, mm -hmm. and they're lost to start with. Now that's 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 a that's a cross. Woe unto you, in verse sixteen, you blind guides which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. And so they that was the worship of the temple and how that they worship the gold and the things that was in there. He says in verse seventeen, you fools and blind, for whether is greater the gold of the temple that's that sanctifieth the gold. And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever <coughs> sweareth by the gift that is on it, he is guilty. For ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gift or the altar, mm -hmm. that sanctifieth the gift. 
Whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and, and by all the things thereon. And whosoever shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth thereon. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. He says this, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you pay tithe of mint and nice and common and, and have omitted the weightier matter of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These all you have done, and not to leave the other undone. Amen. So he says, You blind guide with strain in a gnat and swallow a camel. This is a bad shape for a, uh, a, a person to be in. Amen. To swallow uh, uh, to, 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 to strain in a gnat. Coughing, you know, you had these little gnats to fly in your face and all this, and maybe in your mouth. And they, <coughs> but listen, then they turn around and swallow a camel. Mm -hmm. And the camel was that this guy was lying to them. Mm -hmm. You see. So here. Here again, woe in verse 25, and I'll, I'll be through. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisees, clean first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. And he's saying to them, hey, you're going around here hollering, uh, we love Jesus, or we're we're prophets, and listen to us. And listen, he says, you cleaned up that that front, but he says within you're full of dead men bones. You're telling these people lies, mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about this this day and time. Deceive, deceive, deceive. Get what you can, get what you can, and that's that's the main. That's that's what that's what's going on in this world today in these churches. They're deceiving people and they're just getting what they can get. Mm -hmm. Too bad. And listen, they're, they're causing souls to, to die and go to hell because they're deceiving them. They're telling them lies and, 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 and grown people taking their babies up there and having them mm -hmm. baptized, sprinkled, and all this stuff and thinking, hey, they're ready to go until, until something else happens. Listen, they're being deceived. Too bad. They're all men to see. So anyway, he goes on and, and he said, Warn you in verse 27, Warn you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto the whitest sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outside, but are within full of dead men, bones, and uncleanliness. Mm -hmm. So they look good. They look good walking up and down that street in them old robes and things like that and, and saying, uh, saying what they believed was, uh, was the Christ and, and all of this. But he said, it's like a white sepulcher, a beautiful white thing. But it's a, a sepulcher is a graveyard. Grave. Amen. And uh, inside of it, it's just rotted corruption from this old flesh. And it's full of dead men bones. And that's what they're putting out. And that's what people are, are grabbing. And that's what is dooming people's souls. Hope this has been something that you'll... Uh, study a little bit more on and give you a thought to think on and uh, hopefully uh, you'll be aware of these people that uh, lie and deceive and tell lies and the best way for you to do that is I recommend for the young ones, the old ones and all, is to keep your head in this right here, read this, pray to God that you'll, that the Holy Ghost will show you how to to understand it or that you will not be tricked by this this, this devil possessed people. So I, I, that's that's my lesson for today. Thank y'all.